Good evening. Welcome to Expert Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mantia. And here at Expert Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, immigrants, and expats who have made Philippines their home. Tonight, after almost two years of expats, we are going to a country where we have never been before. We are going to the country down under, Australia. And our guest tonight is the Senior Trade Commissioner of Australia, Mr. Anthony Vemuth, who comes to the Philippines from Malaysia, USA, Dubai, and Mexico. And he's here to tell us about Australia Unlimited and the relationship that exists between Philippines and Australia. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Sir Anthony Vemuth, Mr. Anthony Vemuth, the Senior Trade Commissioner. Welcome to Expert Insights. Thank you very much, Raju. Really honored to be here. So, uh, tell us first about this campaign of Australia, Australia Unlimited. What does that mean and what does it imply? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Australia Unlimited is all about um, portraying uh, a broader image of Australia. Uh, many people think of Australia with nice beaches, kangaroos and friendly people, but Australia is much more than that. Australia is a sophisticated economy that has had growth for the last 20 years, consecutive growth for, for the last 20 years. Um, Australia is an innovative country. Um, believe it or not, Australia did uh, invent the black box, uh, the flight uh, uh, re recorder. Uh, Wi-Fi internet, uh, Google Maps, uh, the list goes on. So Australia should be uh, known for much more than the, the beaches, the friendly people. Uh, and uh, the kangaroos. And the kangaroos, that's right. I really thought it was all kangaroos and koala bears. About There's more. Yeah, There's it's more. much more. But an interesting stat, we are outnumbered three to one by kangaroos. There's 60 million kangaroos and only 20 million Australians. So roughly three to one we're outnumbered. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good proportion, right? Quite frightening sometimes. So who owns who? The kangaroos own the people or the people own the kangaroos? No, I think it's the other way around, Raju. People own the kangaroos? You bet. All right. So uh, tell me uh, about Philippines and Australia. First tell me, uh, do you find it more fun in the Philippines, sir? It is more fun in the Philippines, and uh, I've been lucky enough to be here with my family for uh, about five months now. We arrived on the 10th of December uh, mm -hmm. last year, uh, and in our short time here, we've been lucky enough to, uh, to visit uh, two of your very nice tourist destinations. I like that, mine. <laughs> In Boracay and, uh, and Cebu, uh, right. and uh, you're right, we did have a lot of fun in the Philippines at, at those two locations. Of the, in the five months, what has been the most happiest, the most fun experience you've had besides going to these places? Anything exciting happened to you, for yeah. you or your lovely wife? When, when I, when, yeah, exciting is probably the wrong word, but what I would say is we, we really enjoyed uh, our visit to Corregidor. Uh, going oh, Corregidor. Yeah. Corregidor, thank right. you. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a very moving uh, day, um, right. looking at uh, the remnants of the Second World War, so that was mm -hmm. a special time for us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to show a quick video about Australia, though Filipinos really know Australia. In fact, many Filipinos believe that Australia belongs to them. Uh, they think it's the 7,108th island. But we'll still show a quick clip about Australia, then we'll take you into what's happening uh, between Australia and Philippines in terms of trade and bilateral exchange and culture. Yes, sir? So we'll put that video up, but uh, if there's anything you want to declare before the video up about the video, this is your time. Uh, no, let's uh, watch the video and let it speak okay, for itself. Okay, let's queue up the video uh, in a minute. If it comes on, here it comes. It's about Australia. Unlimited. One, two, three. Well, there we are. That was Australia. So we actually know what Australia is all about. No? So is there something besides the black box and the uh, uh, pacemaker that Australians invented? Is there something that Filipinos should know about Australia that we don't know yet? Oh, there's, uh, there's plenty of things that the Filipino right. uh, population yeah. should know about Australia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our, um, our vast uh, mineral resources have been a, a, a very important factor in uh, keeping the Australian economy safe during these um, tough economic times. Right, that's uh, one. The Australian economy is the 13th largest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. um, as I said before, um, 20 years of consecutive growth, um, right. so a very robust economy. Um, importantly, we've uh, put a lot of emphasis on a green, sustainable business culture. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just a couple of things that be, uh, I think your viewers should know about Australia. So 20 years of uh, growth, yes. yes, flawless growth. No? What's been the secret behind that besides the fact that there's mining and there's a lot of natural resources? 
Australia taps into? What is the secret? What's the management secret, the leadership secret of Australia? I think a lot of it boils down to the natural resources uh, that are in Australia. I'm not just talking about mining resources. I'm talking mainly about the people. Mm -hmm. um, Australian business is very entrepreneurial um, and, and we are in a position to, uh, to uh, uh, move a lot faster than, than many other countries because we are a smaller economy. Uh, mm -hmm. The economy is a great place to, to test new ideas, to test new inventions and that's why things like Wi-Fi for internet, um, sorry Wi-Fi internet was actually invented in Australia. We mm -hmm. were in a position to test these new technologies um, in a smaller market but also a very challenging market. If you think about Australia, it's a very large country, very large continent. Physically, physically, yeah. yeah. But only 20 million people. Right. And, and most of those people live on the east coast uh, or the west coast. Mm -hmm. In fact, mo mainly on the, the east coast. So mm -hmm. um, communicating all around Australia is a big challenge. So um, Australian business and Australian people have, have had to deal with um, challenges of having a dispersed population for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, our Royal Flying Doctor Service, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is, is renowned around the world for its ability to deliver health care to remote and regional communities. Yeah, yeah. And if you uh, think about the Philippines, mm -hmm. 7,107 islands, not yeah. 7,108. We're not having <laughs> Australia on the list just yet. Um, you think about some of the challenges the Philippines face around energy, for example. Um, yeah. Australia does have remote energy sources that yeah. uh, the Philippines could use. Um, mm -hmm. uh, devices that stand alone, that uh, power small communities to give them access to, uh, to electricity uh, so they can have uh, refrigerated product and, uh, and, and heating during the, the cold months. I think there's lots happening in that area here in the Philippines too. Lots of small energy plants in different yeah. formats. No? Let me take you back to the fact that you mentioned that uh, Australia is an entrepreneurial country. People want to come and innovate because of its small population. So is this just Australians uh, tr experimenting in, the, in Australia or is it global co companies coming down and trying Australia as a marketplace or as a test market? What's the difference between the two approaches? Uh, there's a little bit of both, but Australia uh, as a country is, is very attractive to multinational uh, countries, right. mainly because of our uh, a very uh, safe uh, business environment, uh, right, right, very clear okay. legal framework, and importantly, access right. to Asia. Um, right, Asia right. is, uh, we are, Australia is a part of Asia. And, so it's uh, a great test market because of stability, because of language, because of position. It's a great test That's now. right. Geography is very important. Right, right, uh, right. In the old days, when Australia was uh, main trading partners with the UK and the US, mm -hmm. um, geography was a challenge for Australian companies back then. The distance to market was, was very far, obviously. Mm -hmm. But now where our main markets Internet, yeah. um, are Asia. Right. And, uh, and Australia is a part of Asia. Oh, wow. That's why you're at an advantage. All right, uh, Mr. Anthony, let's take a one minute break, a few minute break, and come back and talk to you what's happened about what's happening between Philippines and Australia. A little more detail on trade and bilateral trade between the two countries. Is that okay? Yes. So let's take the break and come back and talk to Mr. Anthony Weymouth, the Senior Trade Commissioner of Australia here in the Philippines. Australia is right or Australian Embassy? Uh, both. Both. Both are right. So okay. Let's take that break and come back in a few minutes and we'll continue talking to Mr. Weymouth from the Australian Embassy. Good evening, welcome back to Expert in Science. I'm your host Raju Mandian and we are talking to Mr. Anthony Vemos, the Senior Trade Commissioner of the Australian Embassy, or Austrade as you call it, and he insisted that I do not call him Sir Anthony because that's how Filipinos address guests and people in power, so he said I should call him Anthony. So let's go with that. Thank uh, you very much, I appreciate it. You appreciate Raju. that, you can you call bet. me Raju. Thank huh? you. So Anthony, tell us about uh, now what is happening between Australia and Philippines currently in terms of just trade. Trade and investment. Okay, so uh, on the 1st of January 2010, um, a free trade agreement was signed between ASEAN countries, New Zealand and Australia. This right. So, right. Yeah, so that free trade agreement was uh, considered by many mm. to be uh, one of the best free trade agreements uh, in its existence at that point in time. Yeah. Um, and. I'm pleased to say that um, Filipino companies can now export most of their products mm -hmm. to Australia duty-free. Uh, almost duty-free. Almost duty-free. Ninety-five percent of products. And can that be includes everything, soft goods, hard goods, uh, manufactured goods, branded, non-branded, everything? Yep. There, there are some uh, sp particular items which I, I, I can't recall which ones exactly, but mm -hmm. there's several items that you can't uh, export duty-free, but um, by 2020, Mm -hmm. Everything will be duty-free, but 95 or 96% of items 
can be exported to it Australia. It must be some of those restricted free. pearl of the Orient, the, the thing that comes from the sea coral stuff, that must be restricted still, I think. Uh, I would assume so. Yeah, you may be talking about quarantine issues rather than duty issues. Uh, uh -huh. There is still some quarantine uh, requirements right. in place, obviously, yeah. but um, likewise for Australia. Australian products can now be exported to the Philippines, essentially duty free. So what that does for both our countries is it provides an opportunity for the consumer to have more choice. So the only added cost is the transportation and probably the handling. That's it. Yeah, so beef and wine and no grapes from Australia, no? Grapes, yes. Uh, wine, um, yeah. yeah uh, well, there, are, yeah. there is wine, uh, yeah. Australian wine in the Philippines, obviously, yeah. but um, also table grapes. Grapes that we can buy and, uh, and consume uh, at mm. the, uh, the right. grocery store. Yeah. Um, we're doing some trials at the moment. Um, the first container of Australian grapes arrived in the Philippines uh, last month. Good. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing those on the shelf as well. I like Australian lamb. <laughs> oh, I, I love do. Australian <laughs> lamb too. It's, uh, so it's in the 20 years, Anthony, uh, you said Australian, Australia's growth has been robust. Yes. Philippines growth has not been robust, no? But how has the trade been? How has it grown bilaterally between the two? Since the free trade agreement has been brought into place, right. the trade... How much has it grown? 20%. Every year or total? Total in the last uh, financial year, trade mm -hmm. between the Philippines and Australia grew by 20%. And it is now valued at $2.9 billion. So it's a significant increase and uh, a lot of the reason for the growth is due to the free trade agreement that was signed on the 1st of January 2010. Mm. Um, areas where uh, the Philippine exports to Australia, things like electrical products, mm -hmm. uh, manufactured goods. Australia, of course, sells lots of wheat and beef to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But importantly, um, the Philippines uh, sells a lot of services to Australia. I'm not just mm -hmm. talking about tourism services, but BPO. Services. Yeah, bank sure. business process outsourcing services. Right, right. Um, and there's about uh, 40 Australian companies that are working very closely with a yeah. Filipino partner and are now established here uh, delivering those same services. So what is uh, Austria doing to further increase this or maximize on this opportunity? What are the initiatives that you are taking currently given the fact that there's an open trade agreement between the two countries? Yeah, well, uh, our role is to uh, help Australian companies explore markets around the world mm -hmm. um, from an investment, trade and education uh, point of view. In the Philippines, one of our key roles is to help Australian companies understand what the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. um, the Philippines is not China, the Philippines is not Indonesia, it's not one of those very large markets where there is a lot of publicity all of the time. It is a smaller market. Um, so one of the key roles for us is to make sure that we communicate to the Australian business people mm -hmm. what the great opportunities opportunities are here in the Philippines mm -hmm. and we do see opportunities in the BPO sector, we do see opportunities in education, mm -hmm. we do see opportunities in food and beverage and also mining. Um, energy, you mentioned energy before, yeah, yeah. I was startled and, and really very surprised actually and but, but very pleased by the same token that the Philippines uh, generates over 30 percent of its energy from renewable energy. That's a really great achievement. The Philippines government has got some really good legislation in place that enables that. They've got mm -hmm. some very aggressive goals about moving that forward in terms of doubling that output mm -hmm. over the next five years, mm -hmm. and Australia can help with that. So, uh, what, what, uh, the Australian business person, what does he not know? That what are you educating him? What areas about the Philippines? Not just the fields, but in terms of uh, putting up a business, in terms of partnering with a Filipino. What does the Australian business not know, and what are you ed educating him with? Yeah, uh, doing business in, in many parts of the world uh, is mm -hmm. obviously different to Australia and, and, and as you right. mentioned in the introduction, I've lived in, in, in quite a few uh, different places and uh, doing business in the Philippines uh, I, I, you know, is different and uh, I encourage Australian companies to do detailed research before they come here. Mm -hmm. um, there is not a market for everybody in the Philippines, so it's important. Not every Australian business no, person, no, yeah. Every Australian business will not succeed here. It's mm -hmm. about having a targeted approach to your research. Um, importantly, it's about understanding the regulatory environment that your product or service will operate in so we can help them understand those regulatory requirements. Um, and, um, and, and often it, it's about making sure that you're working with the right partner. In the Philippines, there are laws around uh, uh, ownership in terms of business ownership. So um, yeah. um, it's important that we communicate those legal issues to these foreign business people as well. Anything about the culture? Any challenges in the Filipino culture versus Australian culture? Um, the, the Filipino business person, um, from my uh, short experience here in, in five months, is very open. 
Mm. Um, they're, they're in, in fact welcoming uh, and, uh, and, and, and generally like Australians is, is mm. the feeling I, I have got from a cultural point of view. Filipinos um, do speak English and it's one of the key That's strengths of, of yeah. the Filipino economy. Mm. One of the challenges for Australia though is this um, uh, brotherhood relationship with the US. So there is a, mm. a stronger affinity between yeah, the U.S. and yeah. the Philippines. Historically, there is. That's, that's yeah. exactly right. So How about the Filipino business person or the Filipino investor in Australia? Uh, what is he looking to learn from Australia about investing and succeeding in Australia? What do they need to know? Um, yeah, I suppose there are differences in, in dealing with Australian organisations as well. You just have to listen to the way that I talk and um, I've, uh, I've found out that I need to slow down more when I'm in the Philippines. Oh, no, no, besides that, besides <laughs> that, in terms of real uh, legislation, maybe bureaucracy, is there something that the Filipino needs to understand on how to register and start a business? I understand the language, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Anthony, don't worry about it. Yeah, um, the, the Australian business environment is very transparent. It's a, yeah. it's a competitive market. Um, mm. It's only 20 million people. Right. Um, so yeah. for, for a Filipino business to set up um, in Australia, they likewise need to do their homework. But um, Australia is open for business. There's, there's, there's many areas of opportunity in Australia. For example, the Australian government, like the Filipino government, is very uh, committed to increasing tourism infrastructure at the moment. Mm. So if there's any Filipino business people out there interested in tourism infrastructure, mm -hmm. Australia is the place for you. All right, fantastic. How about the tax structure, business registration, ownership uh, for the Filipino businessman in Australia? What yeah, is you can register a new company in Australia. You can own it 100 percent. Yep, on the same day. You can own it 100 percent, or do you have to partner with an Australian? Um, you can own your own business. Mm -hmm. How about the tax structure? Australian tax is uh, quite high compared to to, to many countries. Um, but uh, it's comparable to uh, to other developed countries. And it has its benefits, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I understand from uh, the news I read there are almost 200,000 Filipinos in Australia. You know? uh, so they're in Sydney, Melbourne, and uh, Victoria. Victoria is what Australia is referred to as sometimes. Am I right? No, Victoria is, uh, is one of the states of Australia. It's a province. Uh, yeah. It's similar to a province, but, but Australia has... Uh, Victoria is a state, New South Wales is a state, Queensland is a state. So uh, oh. capital city in, uh, of uh, Mel Victoria is Melbourne. Right. Um, so Filipinos are based right up and down the eastern seaboard. Uh, there's about 7,000 in Darwin, for example. In where? Darwin. 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 Yeah, Northern Territory. What do Territory. they do? What do these 200,000 Filipinos do? What's their main uh, source of income or industry? Um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I really can't give you a definitive answer because the Filipino population has um, integrated so well into the Australian economy. Unlike some other ethnic cultures that come to Australia, they really adapt very well to the Australian culture and, uh, and, and live the Australian way of life. So mm -hmm. they're in every element of the workforce. Not, th there's not one particular area where they're only working. Mm -hmm. in, in here in the uh, Philippines, uh, besides beef and grapes and wine, what are the other sectors that Australian businesses, besides the BPOs, you mentioned BPOs, uh, is there any other thing uh, that we're doing, mining, tourism, uh, manufacturing, examples of businesses that have succeeded in the Philippines? Yeah, there's, there's an Australian company called Austal, uh, which is Sorry? Austal, A-U-S-T-A-L, Austal. Yeah. Uh, they build uh, very large boats. Um, uh, they're commercial boats and also military boats uh, made right. from aluminium. Um, uh, they're both uh, a catamaran and a trimaran. It's a, it's a new technology for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They've established a manufacturing site down in Cebu. Mm -hmm. They're building their first boat right now. It's, a, it's an export for the Philippines. And this is one of the benefits of the free trade agreement. It enables Australian companies to do business in the Philippines um, and then re-export to other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's one example of, uh, of some uh, new technologies, um, some innovation business, yeah. uh, and investment mm -hmm. coming to the Philippines. The other area where Australia is very interested in the Philippines uh, is mining. Um, mm -hmm. The Philippines has got um, the fourth uh, largest gold reserves in the world, fifth largest in copper. Mm -hmm. um, Australia has got a very long history of sustainable, responsible mining. Mm -hmm. And Australian companies are very uh, keen to work in the Philippines to help the Philippines make the, the most of, of their natural resources, but in a sustainable, responsible, environmentally friendly way. Any examples of any successful companies in mining that are doing well, that have been here for the longest time? 
Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, there, there, there's a couple of small um, projects that, that are underway. Um, the Philippines government right at this time is reviewing the mining policy. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was already reviewed. It's been under review for some time, Raju. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, the latest we hear is that the, the new mining policy will be out in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one Australian company um, who is looking to invest $6 billion. Wow. $6 billion yeah. into one mining project in, into the Philippines. Right. This will have an impact of uh, generating an additional 1% of GDP to the Philippine economy over the next 20 years. So right. mining is a great opportunity for the Philippines. And for Australians in the Philippines. Yeah, and, and as I say, Australia's reputation as a responsible miner, we're here to help um, the Philippines people get the most out of that asset. Well, good luck with that one because that's kind of sensitive a topic and lots of people are for it and against, for, against it. So hopefully after the new policy, people, everyone will be happy all around. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Australia and Philippines, the history of their partnership and relationship goes back a long time. Plus, you have been an uh, avid supporter of Philippines in terms of disaster recovery, in terms of infrastructure building. Are you doing something currently uh, that still supports the Philippines? Is yeah. Australia doing something? Many people may not know that Australia is the single largest aid donor to the Philippines. Compared um, to any other country in the world, even the U.S.? Yes. Wow. Australia, uh, it's, the aid program is about $120 million per annum. Per annum? Per annum. This is bigger than the U.S.? Uh, yeah, the, the, I wouldn't know how much. Yeah, yeah. The, the direct comparison, USAID is, is the organization you would compare to. The U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. has many programs, but in terms of a single program, this is the largest single program. 129 million per annum. 127 million uh, for, for next year. That was announced in the Australian uh, federal budget on the 8th of May. But um, the main focus of, of that uh, assistance is through basic education. Uh, through infrastructure developments, through uh, capacity building at the local government level, and as you say, importantly, to help in uh, disaster recovery. Mm. So how does, uh, how does the Australian government go about in, besides granting it, uh, monitoring the use of this grant, how does the Australian government do that? And where, how does the Philippine on the street come to benefit from it or see the benefits of it? What is the what is the technique? What is the process? Yeah, so the Australian government uh, is represented uh, through the Australian embassy here. It's yes. A, it's a very large embassy. Mm -hmm. It's with, uh, within the top ten. I think we're the number seventh in terms of the size. In terms of people in the embassy? Yes. In terms of its busyness? No, in terms of the, the, the size of the embassy from an Australian point of view, this is uh, right. within the top ten for Australia around the world. Right. So the Australian government is committed to the Philippines. Wow. Um, we work in trade. I look after trade, we work in uh, development assistance, which is where AusAid fits in, mm -hmm. um, defence, policing, a whole range of things. But to get back to your question uh, around uh, development yeah. assistance, uh, yeah. the Australian uh, government will sit down with the Filipino government and they agree a strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the strategy is now available on the embassy's website. Um, so it's really transparent, like what's happening with the money. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, th there's an agreed strategy. There's a team of project managers in place mm -hmm. um, who monitor and uh, the, the, the expenditure of those funds against particular milestones. Um, so it, it's a very transparent process. Is there any project that the ordinary person on the street can see and know that's happening between Australia and Philippines? Is there something that you can cite? Yeah, there's a project out in Tagig. I think you would to gig, to gig the area, yeah, the the yeah. city right here, the pro, yeah, yeah, where uh, where where Australia is uh, is, is helping with uh, basic education services for for kids in in all for all the uh, schools there, the local schools there, not in in all the schools, in, in in several particular schools. And how is that curriculum or is that infrastructure building, is curriculum. It teacher development, curriculum, curriculum development. right? Yeah, and. Uh, just on the education front, and we'll talk more about education later, but yeah. the, uh, the, the, the President's uh, agenda around uh, education, really pleased to see them introducing K-12, to so um, rather than just going for 10 years of schooling, um, it goes for 12 years of schooling, which is what the standard is uh, in Australia and in many places around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and through AusAid, um, Australia has actually been at the policy table with yeah. the Philippines Education Department, helping put that framework in place. Mm. There's also something called the Human Resource Development Fund. Is that part of AUSAID or is that a totally different department? Because I understand from the Australian Embassy that uh, the Human Resource Development Department of AUSAID also supports uh, governmental uh, development 
Is it part of that or is that a different project? Because they have funding too. Yeah. So it could um, be part of this 127 million? Yeah, no, it's, it, it's not part of the 127 million, but I'm very happy to get back to you with more details on it. And you know, so you don't yeah. know about that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now let's move on because we still have time before the segment ends. Let's talk about the education that comes and from Australia and the opportunities therein. So would you like to give us a big picture on that sector, education, yeah. Australia and Philippines, yeah? Yeah, What's thank that? yeah. Okay, so um, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning, Australia certainly does have nice beaches and nice people and kangaroos and all sorts of other <laughs> natural... Uh, people and the beaches, yeah. Yeah, so there's all these, all these attributes, but it's more than that, it's much more right. than that. Yeah. And uh, 600,000 international students choose to go to Australia each year to study. Um, and it's not for the in beach. In a given year, 600,000? Per, per annum. Given 20 million Australians, 600,000, that's a large percentage of foreigners studying in Australia. It is. And, and uh, from an Australian point of view, it's great to have that diversity uh, in, in the classroom at the university. To, of to course, ha to have is, that yeah. level of diversity is fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, but those 600,000 students who come to Australia each year to study, um, they come because an Australian education is future thinking. It's looking at what are the challenges in the world today, how can we fix them. That's where the Wi-Fi internet came from. All these innovations, these solutions, um, it's about uh, helping um, the next generation of, of, of um, business, um, but also community leader. So it is about looking at the challenges that the, the world faces and coming up with solutions. Australian qualifications are recognised around the world. So if you've got an Australian education, um, you can work nearly anywhere. Um, and what we have found is that uh, with your Australian education, many people have, uh, have risen to very senior levels, both within government but also the private sector. And in my short time here, I've had the, the pleasure of meeting some very senior Filipino business people right. who were studying in Australia and also on the defence side as well. One quick question before we take a break, Anthony. No? Yep. Expensive to study in Australia compared oh. to US? Just US being a standard, let's say. Is it more expensive? I would say it's very similar. It's quite similar. And how about admissions? Is it easier compared to US? Are there more seats open for foreign students? Or there's a big lineup of people waiting. Yeah, now I'm very pleased to say that at the higher education level, mm -hmm. that Australia have uh, recently uh, conducted a review of our mm -hmm. education sector called the Knight Review. Mm -hmm. And for Filipino students now, it's actually easier than it ever has been to go and study at an Australian institution. All right, so on that note, let's take a little break and then we'll come back and talk to you a little bit more about education and the lighter side of life in Australia. So ladies and gentlemen, that's Anthony Vemuth, the Senior Trade Commissioner of the Australian Embassy and we'll come back and talk a little bit more to him about Australia Unlimited. I'm your host Raju Mandian. Please stay watching. More about Good evening. Welcome back to Expert Insights. I'm your host Raju Mandian. We're talking to Mr. Anthony Vemuth. I hope I pronounced that right. Anthony Vemuth, uh, Senior Trade Commissioner of Australia. And uh, we were talking about the educational opportunities in Australia which are very good. I hope to go there and study someday when I grow younger. Uh, if not, then I'll send my kids there someday. Uh, sir, tell us a bit more about it. I thought you wanted to say something else about yeah, the education yeah. in Australia. Thank you, Raju. The, the, the one extra comment I did want to make was that um, what the, uh, our friends in the Philippines will start seeing um, is a new brand uh, around Australian education. What is that? Future Unlimited. That's a brand? Uh, that's Future a Unlimited. Yeah. What yeah. does that mean? It's uh, all of our events that we run in education in the Philippines will be under this brand of Future Unlimited. What it basically means is that if you get an Australian qualification, you have an unlimited future. You can go and study and work anywhere. Um, well, isn't that the case today? I mean, isn't, if I get an education in Harvard or Oxford, I can go and work anywhere. Does, does, does anybody stop me from doing that? No, oh, that's true. But what I'm saying, if, if you're uh, working in the Philippines, or sorry, studying in the Philippines, yeah. uh, unfortunately, Filipino qualifications are not recognized around the world. Oh, okay, okay, but, okay, yeah. But uh, Australian qualifications are. Mm. So uh, your pathway or, or, or a student's pathway to a, uh, a long career around the world, not mm. necessarily in Australia, not necessarily in the Philippines, maybe the US, maybe somewhere else. I, think an some the, some, uh, I hope you don't mind. I think some of the universities in the Philippines are recognized globally. Yep. Some are not. No? Uh, and uh, uh, my question to you would be that how do the rest of the universities go about being universally Recognize what is the strategy that you guys have done that we can follow suit? 
Yeah, well, what we're looking at doing, and there's already 11 Australian institutions with a cooperation agreement in place with Filipino institutions mm -hmm. um, to uh, enable that joint recognition of, of qualifications. So, for example, University of Queensland, okay. uh, the University of, of Newcastle, they've got agreements in place in the Philippines with, other, with Filipino universities so that when uh, graduates go through their, their course, they will be issued with two degrees one from the Filipino institution and one from the Australian institution, which enables them to... Um, that, that's if I was doing an MBA in, uh, in Queensland, Yep. then I'd get two degrees, one from a Filipino partner university and one from Queensland? Now, if you are studying in Queensland, yes, right. you, you will get an MBA from that university in Queensland. Yeah. What I'm saying is there's an articulation agreement in place with several universities here where both organisations will issue the graduate mm -hmm. with a qualification. Mm, okay. Just, just another model. Wow, it's good, good, good for you. I wish I could go there. So, is there something happening in the near future that you are doing to promote uh, education, Australian education in the Philippines or Australian business? Do you have any trade missions, any business trips to Australia coming up yeah. that Filipinos or my viewers can come and join? Definitely. On mm -hmm. the 18th. 19th and 20th of this month in May, mm -hmm. uh, there's a very large Australian uh, ed education exhibition being held at the Dusatani Hotel. There'll okay. be 40 Australian right. universities um, and colleges there. Um, so uh, we encourage uh, anybody who's interested to come along and learn more about um, Australian education. Um, well, what should a student do? I mean, uh, I have a 19 year old who's studying in La Salle and she's doing her BA in yep. Human Resource Development. Yep. And if she wants to plan her future, or any other student out here in the Philippines wants to plan a future in Australia, acquire the education there, what are the steps that they should take? Do they save money? Do they start applying now? Or do they get more credits in their work? I would encourage them to go on to studyaustralia.com.au. Right. And the whole pathway uh, for how you can get an Australian education yeah. is very clearly mentioned on that website. So, um, again, it's uh, studyaustralia.com.au, uh, yeah. which will, will, will uh, put out the pathway to enable her to... Uh, to follow an education Discover in Australia. Her path. Yeah, but there's also um, many education agents who are based here in Manila uh, mm. and, and all around the Philippines, in fact, who she could talk to mm -hmm. about options for studying in Australia. Or she could come along to our, uh, our fair on the 18th, 19th and 20th of May at the Dusitani where uh, she can meet one-on-one -on -one with one of these universities and, and have a conversation. Um, um, how about financing it, Anthony? I, I, w I would assume that coming from a economy that's Filipino, which is, you know, kind of tight, uh, how would they finance it? What are the strategies on being able to afford your own education? Yeah, the, uh, the, the new legislation I was talking about, sorry, the new legislation, the review of Australian education, mm -hmm. the Knight Review, um, mm -hmm. it, it did look at this, um, and for the Philippines, as I mentioned before, um, it's now an assessment level one uh, country, which means it's more streamlined and easier for Filipino students to study in Australia, and importantly, the financial requirements mm. that you need to demonstrate are less. Less, and they can uh, they work and study. And they can work and study. Wow! So they can pay for their own education. Yes. Well, and good. So that's 18th and 19th at the Dusit, and hope I'll see you there too. I'll be there for sure. Right. What's happening in the consumer market? Uh, I understand you have something happening with Australian beef here in the Philippines. Did you want to talk about that? Yeah. You, uh, you the steaks and the lambs. <laughs> I love my beef and I love my lamb. Yeah. Um, and I'm pleased to say that um, the consumer will now be able to, uh, to see uh, the Australian beef logo, uh, which was relaunched um, earlier this year in Roostans and other uh, supermarket yeah. chains that will guarantee a natural, safe and quality product. Um, the Australian beef um, can be relied upon. Paddock to plate traceability. I'm sorry, say that again. Paddock to plate. So what that means? Paddock to plate. Paddock to plate. So where the cow stands in the field eating. Oh, the paddocks. Grass. Yeah, paddocks. P -A -D -D -O -C -K -S. Yeah. There's that accent again. Oh, it's terrible. From isn't the it? farm to the. From the farm, farm to the plate. To the, to the mesa. Yeah. To the mesa. Mesa. Mesa table. Oh, okay. To the table. Yeah, mesa in Tagalog. No. I need to learn some more words. Really. Right, right, right. So what's the best place to go for Australian beef besides Rustans, besides buying it raw? What's a nice place to have Australian dinner before, besides Outback? Okay, there's a little restaurant, uh, Filipino restaurant that I like going to called Sala Bistro. Yeah. Which Sala is Bistro. S-A-L-A yeah. -A Bistro, which is in uh, Greenbelt 3. Mm -hmm. You get a nice Australian tenderloin there, very nice. 
So one of these Saturdays I should be there, you slicing should. up a slice of beef. Yeah. yeah, I go once a fortnight. I have to go and get my n nice right. serving of beef once a fortnight. Very good. So, uh, Anthony, I am done asking you about Australia and learning about Australia. And uh, if there's anything else you want to tell me, if not, then I'm going to start asking you questions about your life in Australia with your wife. How does she love it here? And where do your kids go to school and stuff like that, which is normal yeah. of us to do. But I'm not going to do it unless you allow me to. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you to do that, Raju. But so, uh, describe a life in the day of a senior trade commissioner in the Philippines. Do you take the jeepney to work? I don't drive the jeepney to work, uh, <laughs> but in, I do drive myself to work. So what's a, what's a day in the life? What do you do? I mean, well, how's your day? You get up in the morning and say, I gotta move beef from Australia to the Philippines, or I gotta move students from Philippines to Australia. What, what do you do in a day? Okay, so uh, the Australian Trade Commission, we've got a, a small office here, only about 12 people. Um, you have a staff of 12 people? Yeah. And you don't own the business? Okay. <laughs> it's Australian government. <laughs> okay, yeah? Yeah, so um, on, a, on a daily basis, uh, I will be working with my, my team to work out what the opportunities are in the Philippines for Australian companies. And for example, um, something we're looking very closely at the moment is the Philippine government's private uh, public partnerships, um, yeah. PPP. Yeah. Uh, the Philippine government is uh, putting a lot of emphasis on building like, infrastructure. Just like Thailand did many years ago, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, w so we investigate opportunities like that to work out whether we think Australian companies have the capability to assist the Philippines develop that sector further or that opportunity further. Anything you say. have found that you want to invest and work at currently? Uh, our priority sectors are infrastructure, yeah. mining, right. food and beverage, agribusiness, energy, yeah. Anything on infrastructure and agribusiness? Agri yeah, the, the dairy is a, is a global problem. Uh, right, if we right. think about what's happening in the world, um, the population is growing, uh, there's only a finite supply of dairy product, um, yeah. and uh, demand is outstripping supply. So something that we're interested in working with the Filipino um, business people on is building your own dairy industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and next week up in Baguio, there's a dairy conference. So we're going up there to talk to Filipino um, dairy uh, producers um, mm -hmm. and, and other people in that business to, uh, to understand what the needs are and, and work out if we can help. Mm. What's a what's, uh, day in the life of the family of a senior trade commissioner then? What does the commander, as they say in the Philippines, do or the kids do? Yeah, well, our daughter is 19, so she's studying, right, uh, we, we, which, is, which is very good. Um, and, uh, and at the moment, my wife is, uh, is keeping herself busy with a, a couple of days of part-time work. Um, and also in the embassy? Yeah, in the embassy. All right, yeah, okay. But, um, but also going out and, and, and visiting um, some, some, some local uh, charity organizations. Good, um, so we should see her in action someday. Yeah. No? With some help helping the Filipino people. Uh, Four years in the Philippines, that's what your term is. Yes. What do you plan to achieve and what do you plan to uh, leave behind? Okay. Um, four years, as you say, sounds like a long time, but, but in, uh, but, but in the scheme of business, it's not a very long time at all. Yeah. So um, I'm pleased to say that the uh, relationship between Australia and the Philippines is already very strong. Mm -hmm. um, so there's already been a lot of very good progress achieved. My goal is to uh, help that continue. Uh, to help Australia and the Philippines make the most of the free trade agreement. Okay. I'm really uh, uh, been very impressed with uh, the President Aquino's uh, yeah, agenda. Yeah, he's a good guy. Around reform yeah. and uh, removing the red tape. So I think over the period that I'm going to be here for the next four years, there is you an opportunity. You are in a good time. You're in a good time. So am I. So am I. Yeah. These are happy times for the Philippines. And I think the four, next four years should be really bright and shiny for us. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, here we go. So sorry about that little technical glitch, that uh, video that came in from the embassy couldn't be run in the machines over here. So Sir Anthony, very sorry about that little technical glitch. Go ahead and wish the Filipino-Australian community that you represent and do work with bye-bye uh, and wish them all the best. And this is your moment if you want to an announce or make a statement about Australia. Okay, thanks on very much. On that camera over there. On that camera over there, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Raju. Um, really appreciate uh, the time this morning and uh, this afternoon, sorry, this evening, isn't it? Um, 
Australia and the Philippines already does have a very strong relationship. Um, it's uh, long and enduring, um, and uh, as, you, as we spoke about already, 200,000 Filipinos living in Australia who are making a significant contribution. Um, I'd like the audience to remember that Australia is much more than beaches. It's much more than uh, kangaroos. It's about uh, uh, an economy that has been growing at 20% per annum. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, 20 been growing for 20 years uh, consistently it's a, 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 and, and will continue to do so for some time. Um, and uh, we look forward to working with the Filipino people to, uh, to, to help the Philippines reach its own potential. All right, Sir, Sir Anthony, thank you very much for being on X5 Insights. And, um, thank you very much. I hope that our countries come closer together so we can count Australia as one of the islands very soon in the near future and get closer in business and relationship. Uh, so, sir, ladies and gentlemen, that was Sir Anthony Weymouth talking about Australia Unlimited. Next week on um, Expert in Science, we have a gentleman from Assist, and he's going to talk about uh, process-oriented philanthropy. His name is Srinivasan, and we'll also have a lady who runs the Philippine Institute for the Deaf, Julie Esguera. That'll be our guest next week. Stay watching Expert in Science, and tonight, being Mother's Day, I want to wish every mother... A happy Mother's Day. May you stay blessed. Good night and Mabuhai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.